Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. My name is Crown and today I'm going to read you some very interesting stories that I hope that you're gonna love. And now, without further ado, let's go! Hey y'all, I thought I'd tell you the story of the time I almost got arrested. This happened over 12 years ago, so the dialogue won't be exact and the story might be a little scrambled, but I'll tell it as I remember it. So, sit back and enjoy. This happened when I was 16 in 2006. I was going to school in New Zealand and the next day I went back to Australia. My mom lived in New Zealand and my dad lived in Australia. On my last day at that school, my last lesson of the day was art. I was about to start packing up when there was a knock at the door and a few minutes later my teacher asked me to go out into the hall. I went out and there was a police officer standing there with a stern look on her face. Clearly, not a social visit. The police officer asks, Miss OP, I need you to come with me to the station. Me? Confused? Um, why? Is there something wrong? Well, we can discuss it when we get to the station. Me still not understanding what was going on. Okay, but today's my last day here, and I need to pack my things and get some of my stuff from the office. That's okay. I can wait. So, I got the rest of my things and followed the police officer to her car. When I got in the car, I asked if she could tell me what was going on. And she told me there was a break-in earlier that day and my name was mentioned as a person that was there. I had been at school all day, so it obviously wasn't me. When we arrived at the station, I was put into an interview room while the officer left to fetch something. A few minutes later, she came back in with another person. The person who told the police that I've been the one at the pre-kin. My god, hit the floor as I recognized the girl. She would often hang around with me and my sister and her friends. She was a few years younger than me and needless to say, I was pissed. Police officer says, Hi OP, I would like for you both to tell your story of where you were today. Sally, you can start. Well, I went to my brother's place at lunchtime and I saw OP was there stealing stuff. When she saw me, she took off out of the window. Then the police arrived. Me? Ready to strangle Sally. I've been at school all day and I've got at least 20 people that can vouch for it. Well, I'll need names of those people. I gave her the names of all the people I was with for most of the day. Then looked at Sally and said, if I was there, Please tell the officer what color my school bag is. Ha! Huh, it's black. Me, smug and satisfied. Officer, please have a look at my school bag. It's white, with Hello Kitty on the front. That's the only one I own. And while you're at it, please check Sally's school bag if you haven't already. In the bottom right side, you'll find a small hole in the stitching. You will find a small pipe and more than likely some weeds. Even though I didn't know Sally well, she was very vocal about her secret stashes and hiding places. The look on Sally's face changed from confident to terrified in a heartbeat. If she was going to accuse me of something I didn't do, I am taking her down instead. The rest of the story is a bit of a blur for me, but it turned out that Sally and her friends went to Sally's brother's house when he was at work, intending to steal from him. The police were called and when they arrived, Sally panicked and said that I was there and they were trying to get me to leave. Sally's lie backfired big time. She was charged with theft, break and enter, drug position, and lying to a police officer. I never saw her again after that, but I hope she turned her life around. Hey there. Well, I'm a regular horse trainer with a not so regular story to share. It all started at our cozy little horse ranch, where I worked alongside my fellow trainers. You see, I've always had a deep connection with these majestic creatures. But little did I know that this day will bring a wild ride on its own. Now, you might be wondering about my backstory, huh? Well, I grew up on a small farm and horses were my constant companions. I learned to ride at a young age and those majestic creatures quickly became my best friends. Eventually, I pursued my passion and became a professional horse trainer. I loved sharing my knowledge with others and seeing the joy horses brought to people's life. Now back to the story. 
Our ranch was quite popular in the area and we welcomed all sorts of people who wanted to experience the joy of horseback riding. This one day, we had a crowd of eager kids and parents lining up for riding lessons. Most of them were delightful. But then there was Karen. Oh boy, Karen. As I was getting ready for the day, a loud and demanding voice interrupted the cheerful chatter. Excuse me, my precious Ethan must try that magnificent white horse over there, said Karen, pointing at Luna, a beautiful but untamed mare that we reserved for experienced riders. I smiled politely trying to be understanding and replied, I appreciate your enthusiasm, ma'am, but Luna is still being trained. She might be a bit too spirited for young Ethan over here. But Karen was having none of it. Nonsense! My Ethan is a natural-born rider. He's only five, but he's already won awards at riding competitions. He will handle that beast just fine. I raised an eyebrow, wondering where those awards came from. Nevertheless, I insisted. I don't doubt Ethan's potential, but it's best to start with one of our more gentle horses first. Safety is our priority here. Ethan started whining. Mommy, I want to ride that horse. She's so pretty. Oh boy, the mommy card had been played. Karen turned to Ethan. Don't worry, sweetie. Mommy will take care of it. Then Karen started walking toward Luna, completely ignoring my warnings. Ma'am, please don't do that. I pleaded, quickly following her. But Karen just scoffed at me. Don't worry about a thing, cowboy. I know what I'm doing. Karen approached Luna, who sensed her intrusive energy and became agitated. I shouted, Ma'am, please stop, it's not safe. But it was too late. Karen reached out to grab Luna's brittle, and before I could blink, Luna bucked and sent Karen flying. Yikes, I told you. I yelled, rushing to Karen's side. The other parents gasped and a few kids giggled, whispering about how Karen got what she deserved. But there was no time for jokes. Karen lay there, clutching her side in pain. Someone call 911. I yelled and, thankfully, a responsible parent immediately dialed for help. Meanwhile, Ethan was in tears and I rushed to comfort him. It's okay, buddy. Your mom will be alright. This is why we have rules for everyone's safety. As the EMTs arrived, they checked on Karen's condition. It seemed like she'd only suffered minor injuries, though her pride might have been bruised more than anything else. In the aftermath, Karen left the ranch in an ambulance, but not before giving me a dirty look and muttering something about suing. I sighed, shaking my head. Some people just don't learn. The rest of the day went smoothly, with the kids enjoying their rides on the gentlest horses we had to offer. I couldn't help but chuckle as one younger rider said, I am glad my mom didn't pull a Karen. So this was a few years ago, when I was still in contact with my mother, the entitled mother. I'm proud to say I've gone very low contact since then. So, when I first started college, I would split the weekends between both of my parents. I would stay overnight Friday at my dad since he and my paternal grandparents were the only ones who would offer to pick me up, and then stay Saturday overnight at my mom's. After I got to my dad, my mom supposedly really wanted to talk to me about setting up loans in person to make it easier. I had a very high GPA and a really high ACT score. So, aid covered quite a bit of my expenses, but there was still about another $4,000 a year we just couldn't cover. Since my grandparents offered to pay the full $2,000 of one semester, we just needed to set up a loan for the remaining $2,000. When we get there, she wants to talk to me alone about my loans, leaving my dad out on the Porsche. When I sit down, she has the aid website pulled up and is logged into her parent account. She then says that we need to log me in to accept the amount of aid. I say, sure. Let me make sure we have the right amount. She's trying to take out a loan in my name for $8,000, but the website required my permission. We can't even afford the $2,000 at three people with our own incomes. So I ask her why the hell she's trying to take out a loan for that much. Her answer? Well, I figured we could take a better vacation this year and then we can all make payments on it. People, my parents have been divorced for years. 
Dad has never been invited on a family vacation, but he would have needed to pay more than $2,500 himself for a vacation he can't take. Not only that, but I'm a student with no income for half the year. When I asked how we were supposed to afford to pay that back, she wanted my paternal grandparents to cover what me and dad couldn't. And she would play the lottery, and if that didn't work, they could pick up her remaining debt. Needless to say, she was dumbstruck and pissed to hear that I wouldn't authorize that loan and that any loan in my name would go only to my schooling. So, to get me back, she backs out of paying my loans. I say fine. I didn't want her or dad to anyways. Because my little brother needs to be their focus. Well, this makes it worse. And she kicks me out, tells me I'll be homeless. Who is my dad waiting outside to take me home. Shockingly, it didn't have the effect she wanted it to. I've been reading stories for a long time and I, like many others, ponder about what I would do in that situation. Well, a few years ago, I read of a man at a landscaping store loading his truck with some products when a wild Karen grabbed him causing him to drop and break what he was loading. Said Karen then laid into him about loading some bags of damn fertilizer or peat moss type of thing into her SUV. Rather than argue, he loaded them all into the back of her pristine SUV and proceeded to cut each one open on the bottom, royally soiling her status symbol. Last month, I was at our local very big home improvement chain in our region of the country. There is a big indoors where you load your shopping cart in an even bigger open and covered outside area for the bulkier, dirtier, heavier items. They have a sample of each one near the service desk where they check stock and fill out a loading form of everything you want. You pay for your carted items as well as your yard items and they staple the loading sheet to your receipt. You then drive around the building, show the guard your sheet to get into the yard. Which is what I just did. The load sheet is important as it has all of the SKUs on it for you to match with the ones on each product area as some products are very similar looking. You can load yourself or there are plenty of employees to help. I was loading two dozen one foot square, cheaply made colored cement pavers into the back of my SUV. I had to pick through them as many were chipped or split. I was daydreaming about the project when our well-known antagonist, the Carinus Crapolis, blizzards into stage right and pulled on my sleeve causing a paver to tilt onto one I just loaded and chipped the corner off. I was dumbfounded as she was screeching the yada yada, pay attention, respect my authority and serve me now. You know that song of her people. She must have thought I could not possibly drive a Yukon so I must be a slow-moving, lowly employee whose sole purpose is to kiss her crapolis. While her off-key caterwauling rose a couple of octaves, she thrust her loading slip quite forcefully into my chest, demanding I hurry up and load her precious cargo of some other style landscaping lunacy into her SUV. Learned well she did at the school of Karen as she promptly on cue spun around and started wailing into her phone at another one of her kind. My mind was in overdrive. Oh boy oh boy oh boy. I'm really going to get to do it and dump a load into her Karen carriage. But just then I had an epiphany pop right into my brain. They just happen. I can't do anything about it. I got into my truck and drove off. She never looked back. I got to the exit gate and had to show the guard my loading slip to get out and for my protection, they opened my truck and verified that my count wasn't accidentally off by a hundred or so extra pavers. I was cleared by the keeper of the yard and drove out. With Karen's loading slip and receipt in my pocket, the security cameras would show her assaulting and battering me with as she gave it to me. Now as I said royal document. No employee can nor will help her load anything, nor can she get out of the prison yard without it. Screwed herself while well, she did. I pulled around and found an area through the fence where I could see her, now dragging two actual employees around yelling and yakking, pacing and pointing, leering and looking for that lazy no good employee of myself who vanished like a fart in the wind. I've had various issues correcting things like this. They have to go back into the service desk and void down the original receipts 
that she didn't have, which involved unscanning everything from her card and then rescanning it all back onto a new receipt and then making a new loading slip. Not a fast or enjoyable thing to go through, especially for a Karen with the patience of a Kraken. She could then, with her papers in order, again drive through the guard post and finally get a real employee to load her precious cargo and finally out of there and crawl into her caring cave. As I was leaving, another epiphany pushed its way into my head. I took her paperwork, put it into a shopping cart and buried it into the cart corral. Soon, some corraller of cards will find it and turn it into the manager who will immediately know that Karen lost it herself and not the fictitious employee who was a man who never returned and his fate is still unlearned. This was something that came up last week after our monthly HOA meeting. This wasn't a well thought out plan as our neighborhood is full of kids and many adults and kids swim in the evening. Some of the adults who either have no kids or their kids are grown and out of the house thought it would be a great idea to go and put in this new rule in a low attendance HOA meeting. The next day they made the announcement in our neighborhood Facebook group. Now my kids are younger and no way would they take advantage of swimming from 9 to 11 pm today. But I know many other parents with older kids who do. I simply told them that they need to look at the legalities of this rule as it does violate the Fair Housing Act against familial status. Some of the kidless parents started ripping on me that it's not a thing and that I should go ahead and contact a lawyer about it. I did. He said that if I wanted we could file a case immediately and it would levy a large fine on the HOA as well as damages. I declined but I passed that information to the HOA in that Facebook group post and that it would be very wise to not put that rule into effect and to contact the HOA lawyers before doing it. Within a couple of hours, the HOA stated they were going to put the changes on hold while they contact their lawyers. Two days later, they made a new post, basically stating that I was right and that change would not be able to take effect due to the FHA. I make sure that my kids are extra loud when I see those annoying people, not really, they are just loud all the time, and the pool. Since that happened, and they just glare at me, mad that I took away their adult time and the pool. And now we have reached the end of today's stories. Thank you for watching and see you next time.